Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today we're going to take a plain Christmas bobble ornament and glam it up with some dotted strung pearls. This is my favorite way to decorate baubles and clearly, as you can see here, I've made quite a few. I needed a way to make my inexpensive plastic Hobby Lobby Christmas balls look fancy, like they came from Nordstrom. While this may look intimidating to do, I promise you it's a lot easier than you think. This is similar to the ornaments that we made last year, and so many of you enjoyed that project, I wanted to give you some more designs to make your own collection. So stay tuned, we'll be making more of these in the weeks ahead. So get ready, it's going to be a Dotting Center Bobble Blitz, and you're invited. Here we go. Now to paint your bobble, you'll need something to stick your bobble in as you're painting it. I have this little plumbing part with some putty stuck on it and that works for me. The paint I'm using is Folk Art Multi-Surface. It's not parchment. The color I'm using is actually pearl white, but I couldn't find the bottle. You'll need applicator bottles, which are for sale at the Dotting Center. Now before we paint, we have to draw the design onto the ball. So there are several different methods. You could use a dry erase marker, a quilting pencil, a chalk pencil or um, charcoal pencil, a regular pencil with an eraser, or a chalk marker. All of these could work. I definitely recommend testing it out on your ball first just to make sure that it erases correctly and uh, you'll just need some strips of paper. These are the magical measuring tools that will work for any size ball. I think this little stand is super cute. It's some kind of plumbing part that I picked up at Home Depot. And then I put these two little pieces of Loctite fun tack on it and it just works for any round object. Now I'm using a plastic ball first thing you want to do is take your strip of paper and wrap it around the center, the widest point on your ball. Now you don't have to get exact center on this. Just get it to where it's kind of like the, um, the circumference of the outside of that ball, the widest point. Then you just cut where the two um, pieces of paper meet so that it's the exact width of your ball and now we're going to divide it into eight sections. So the way to do that is you fold the strip of paper in half then you fold it again in half so that gives you four sections. Now we're going to fold it in half again and that gives us eight different sections. Now you can take some scissors and just kind of notch off the corners. That's one way to do it. Um, and then what you have when you open up your paper is perfectly divided into eight, uh, a strip of, of eight different sections. Now, if you want to uh, not mess around with the scissors, you can just use a pen and mark where the fold lines are. Now, hopefully you have tape. I embarrassingly do not have any tape in my entire house. I have no idea how this happened, but... You basically need something to stick your paper onto your ball and then wrap that around your ball one more time. And then you just stick it down so that it's kind of like the waistband right around the center of your ball. So what this gives you is vertical divider lines and you just take whatever t uh, marker you're using to mark your ball and then just put one dot. Now, I recommend using the least amount of marking that you can get away with because in the end, uh, you don't wanna have to fuss with taking off all of the, the marks. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're going to divide the top. Now, you, if you have a plastic ball, you've got that mold line that gives you 
the halfway point. But you want to just line up your dots so that they match the dots on your center line. So now using that measuring piece of paper, we're going to line up the straight line with the dots that we just made. And we're going to place a horizontal marker. So this is going to be the horizontal markers that we're gonna use. So we are gonna just place a mark on the first line and the second line all the way around that ball. Now, some of you I have lost. I realize this seems very intimidating. I promise you, uh, this is the most difficult part of the entire project. And it's really, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that hard. It's just, it seems very difficult at first. I got a lot of comments in my last video where, um, oh, we're gonna use the number 18 tip. This is a really good tip for the project that we're doing. Uh, but I got a lot of comments in my last video saying, oh, this looked so intimidating, but then when I did it, I realized how easy it was. Um, and I promise you, once you start applying paint, you are, like this, from this point on, it's so much easier. It's just getting everything measured out and divided that's difficult. So now we're gonna make a cross using dots of varying sizes. So I did a large dot and then two smaller dots. And now using that first horizontal line, we're gonna make a teardrop shape. And the way that you do that is you squeeze out a large drop and then you drag that paint up. So you squeeze out the paint, you release the pressure, and then drag the tool up. Now we're gonna create a petal shape around each one of these sections that we just painted. And I'm just gonna dot a an outline for the petal. Um, now, if you are confident in your ability to keep everything symmetrical, please feel free to use your, your paint, that's fine. I just feel like I need to have it drawn out first. Like see how it was a little bit too wide on that side, so I caught it and I was able to um, redraw it. But then you can look at it, make sure everything is symmetrical, and then come and get your paint. And now we just go right along that line with tiny dots. I made a bigger dot at the top just for variation, but you just want to make tiny little dots and then one bigger at the top. And then I like to go um, as symmetrical as possi possible just so that I can see these two petals in the north and south hemisphere of my bobble, just to make sure that everything is, is lining up correctly and, um, and make sure it looks good. Oops, easy cleanup. If you don't have silicone tools, oh, you're missing out. They're awesome for um, making your mistakes less awful. Okay, those are available at the Dotting Center too, by the way. So we're gonna finish this petal. Now we're gonna come in and make two little swoosh type designs, just like a little flourish on either side of that big teardrop. You squeeze out a bit of the paint, you release the pressure on the bottle, and then you just drag it up. And this time, rather than a straight drag, it's kind of curved so that it hugs the side of the teardrop shape. Now 
So this is a really good opportunity to let your piece dry right now. Um, go ahead, let it dry because you're going to be able to handle the ball a little bit better if you know that things aren't wet and smearable. Okay, now this is going to be super fun. You guys are going to like this. This is going to, we're going to make the juiciest, plumpiest teardrop shape right in the middle of those two petals where they join up. So check it out. Okay, so what you do is you squeeze out a really large dot. You release the pressure and then drag it up. And don't be afraid to use a lot of this paint. It's got the perfect consistency so that it's gonna stand up and not drip. If you find that your paint is dripping, it's not the right consistency. And then you put two little uh, decorative swooshes on either side and kind of massage that in, make it even, and then move on. Now there is a technique to this. I'll show you, I'll show you in slow motion this way. Okay, so when you first, I'm still using that number 18 tip, by the way. Now see how I kind of push my the tip of my tool in there a couple of times? That mixes the paint so that it's a kind of homogeneous mixture. Um, you really want to get that, that uh, draw the tool up once. It seems to work better if you can draw it up one time rather than twice. It'll just kind of spread on you. I had some grenudges on the tip of my tool, so I had to wipe those off. But then you just drag it up and do it again. Release the pressure and drag it up. So if you find that your drips are kind of lumpy, you're skipping this step. So you push the paint onto the surface and then see, you just want to dab the paint to get it liquefied before you move that paint up. The more paint you have in your, um, in your dot, the longer you can drag that teardrop shape up. Uh, and then what I did there was I just found a landmark. So like this dot is kind of equal to where I want the teardrop to start. So place the dot, release pressure, and drag the tool up. So now we're gonna add another strand of pearls and we're gonna start in the center of this strand and then go down to where that horizontal line is. So I'm just going to make a dotted line with my dry erase marker in just an arc going from one strand to the other so it looks like they kind of connect and you want to try and get this so that it's the same arc on all four sides. And like I said, the less marker that you can use, the better, because then you have less to erase at the end. And now what you do is we're going to divide this line with bigger pearls. So one at each of the tops, so right here at the center top, and then we're gonna divide each side with two more dots. And now you just connect all those bigger dots with smaller dots. And then you just want to do that four different times all the way around the ball. So make the larger pearls first and then connect. This also, it, it adds variation to the pearls, but it also kind of hides any boo-boos. It's a lot easier to make it look nicer this way than if you were to use all tiny dots, because that's a little bit more difficult to get things straight. So, once at the bottom, once at the top, 
two larger pearls to separate and then connect those with tiny pearls just like this and do that all the way around. Now after you complete all of those strung pearls, it's a really good time to let your piece dry. So now we're going to do the final set of strung pearls. We're going to use one section of our measuring paper and mark down from that center pearl. Now we're going to make another arc going from the two largest teardrop shapes and we're just going to make sure the arcs um, are the same on all sides of the ball and these pearls are just going to hang down just a little bit lower than that previous set of strung pearl lines. So now we're going to come in and divide this line again with large pearls. So one right in the center and then two on either side and then we're just going to do one big one um, in this first uh, strand of pearls and then you just connect all the larger dots with small dots just like the previous row. And it's okay if you get two in one and three in another, it really doesn't matter. No one's going to notice except you. So if I didn't mention this before, I'll go ahead and mention this now, but you don't have to use plastic ornaments. Multi-surface paint will work with glass ornaments too, and it would look a lot nicer, but I have kids in my house, and so if I want these to survive, I have to use plastic. So, um, but just pay attention to your paint. Some multi-surface paints require baking in a low heat oven, while others cure with just an, you know, air drying. This folk art paint, you can just dry in the air and you don't need to bake it. And it works on plastic and glass and metal and all kinds of different surfaces, so that's why I like it. So now that the paint is dry, we're going to remove all of our dry erase marker lines. Now I found that a wet cloth didn't work for this. Where it worked with the chalk marker, it just doesn't work with the dry erase marker. But what always works 100% of the time is just a simple pencil eraser. This is, you just want to be gentle with it, make sure that you don't erase off any of the paint. And um, this works all the time with anything. So, yeah. So, what do you think? Wasn't that fun? Don't you love painting this way? I totally love it. And don't forget, last year's video is another design that you can try and stay tuned because the next few weeks we're gonna have more designs on the way and we're gonna make your collection. So happy holidays. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can visit me over at thedottingcenter.com for any art supplies that you'll need. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.